Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here, talking about the Urim and the Thummim. Now, we got our first question from a uh, viewer that would come out of the Book of Knowledge, the Keys of Enoch. The question simply asked, could I explain the Urim and the Thummim? Now, I remember reading in the Keys of Enoch, in fact, that was the only book that gave details about the Urim and the Thummim, was the Keys of Enoch. So, in this video, we're going to use that in order to answer this question. What I'm going to do is step down through each time the word is mentioned in the book. Just read off what it says and talk about what our father inspires me to speak on the subject. So it's going to be a really good class, going to be a lot of information. You may even consider pulling out a pencil and a piece of paper um, if you're truly interested in what the Urim and the Thummim are and what they're used for. Go ahead and hit the like button because you'll probably be overwhelmed by the time you get to the end of the video and you'll forget to do so. Be prepared to leave a comment as we go and stay tuned. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go down here and just look at the times that the phrase Yoram and Thummim is listed and then we're just going to read it and then we'll talk about it. If the Lord, our Father in heaven, hallowed be his name, gives us inspiration, we'll do so. So we'll go ahead and open up with a prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father Abba, we ask you to come by here and help us to understand what it is you would have us to know concerning the Urim and the Thummim. We ask you to condition our minds, condition our hearts and our spirits in order to receive that information that you would have us to learn. And after this video, we ask you to give us further instructions on what we are supposed to do with this information. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And so be it. All right, so we're over here in the glossary. We'll start there as we start to... Uh, as we try to define the word. Now, the first time we see it is in what is talking about a seed crystal, a solid crystal, which is a touchstone gauge to measure the intensity of radiation or key point for the implanting of thought forms. It carries the program for urum and thummum operation. So, this is what carries the program, the seed crystal. It's a touchstone gauge to measure the intensity of radiation. So now hmm, touchstone is a piece of fine grained dark cyst or jasper formerly used in testing alloys of gold by observing the color of the mark which they made on it. A standard or criterion by which something is judged or recognized. So it's a judge, okay? Because it's saying is that it was jasper. So the jasper could be the touchstone, could be made out of jasper. So according to Google, jasper is an arrogate of microgranular quartz and or cryptocrystalline chalcedony and other mineral phases. Quartz is what they use as the timing chips and clocks. So that's very interesting. And then it says, is an opaque, impure variety of silica, usually red, yellow, brown, or green in color, and rarely blue. The common red color is due to iron inclusions. Now it makes sense. So that would be the seed crystal then. The seed crystal is a solid crystal, which is a touchstone. Gauge to measure the intensity of radiation. Or a key point for implanting the thought forms. It carries the program of Urim and Thummim. So the seed crystal is simply a touchstone. How about when you put in a uh, touchstone, all of a sudden Google wants to know your address and where you live. Why don't Google want to know where I live all of a sudden? And it's supposed to be the secure AVG joint. Hmm. That's something. So if I had this thing set to where it told people my location, I would have never known that Google just figured out where I was at. All right, over here it says touchstone metaphor. As a metaphor, a touchstone refers to any physical or intellectual measure by which the validity or merit of a concept can be tested. 
It is similar to use in an acid test, litmus test in politics. That's Wikipedia. Let's come down here to Merriam-Webster, see what it says. Look like you're gonna need a dictionary to define the dictionary. It says a fundamental or quintessential part or feature. A test or criterion for determining the quality or genuine of a thing. A black silica stone related to flint that is used to test the purity of gold or other silver by the streak left on the stone when rubbed by the metal. But here the gauge it says is to measure the intensity of radiation. So that's going to be light. This one is gauged in light. And it says it is a key point for the implanting of thought forms. So the implanting of thought forms that would have something to do with, you know, where the information is coming from and how they're getting it to us. And then it says it carries the program for the urum and the thummum. And that's why we're interested is because the seed program is what's making up the urum and the thummum from what I understand. But let's go on. And down here it says the urum and the thummum are sanctified crystals which form a grid for communication using sacred light and sound patterns which form geometries working with harmonics on given magnetic grids. So you got these crystals, right? But here it says they are sanctified crystals. So you have to have a way of sanctifying these crystals. And once you get these sanctified crystals, it says they form a grid for communication using sacred light and sound patterns, which form geometries working with harmonics on given magnetic grids. Okay, so there's some study to be done there. The next time we see it is down here when it's talking about crystal powers or the powers of crystals. There's a lot of crystals, including blood crystals, but anyway, who knew that crystal really had some power in them? You know, your people have been playing with these things for years, but down here, this is kind of in the index, I believe, where it says the Yom and the Dhamma says powers of Shekinah attunement. So I found that interesting. All right, so we're going to take these in order. The first one comes out of key 105. Verse 60 says, the crystalline fields of the 12 Urim and Thummim will be cleansed. As the scroll of Revelation says, we will be one with the great white throne in the midst of the earth. This is coming out of Key 105, which has the uh, map in it of the dove. This key says the key to our astrophysical time zones is the three and one alignment of consciousness forces in the Great Pyramid with the 12 and one energies of the Time Warp Pyramid centered and controlled by the many and one throne energies of Orion and Pleiades or Kemo and Kizu. So then from what I gather from that is that the Yorm and the Thummim will be a communication pathway for these guys. That's what I believe is talking about where it says we will be one with the great white throne in the midst of the earth. Um, the great white throne being the great white throne of judgment. And then in the midst of the earth, that's going to be after the tribulation, according to this book. There's places within the earth for our father's children to uh, survive the post-apocalyptic time. But anyway, let's go. On. Verse 23 says to fully activate the throne energies. It is necessary also to use the Urim and Thummim grids to build templates of resonance, which are to be placed in alignment with both the sacred energy grids on the planet as well as the grids of the Merkaba of light. So mm, these energy grids, I wonder if they're talking about ley lines. It says the Urim and Thummim are the lights of the charged crystals producing a field effect of color, whereby the thought forms of prayer can be targeted along any number of energy grids, allowing for the electrification of matter. Hmm, turning prayer into energy. Let me read that again. The Urim and the Dhammam are the lights of charged crystals producing, and it, and it has lights in, in, in um, quotes there saying that it's 
not going to be visible light. This is a different kind of light. But the Urim and the Thummim are the light of charged crystals, producing a field effect of color, whereby the thought forms of prayer. So the thought, so our prayer can be targeted along any number of energy grids, allowing for the unification of matter. So that's basically telling us how prayer works. Um, now, so these Urim and this Thummim, from what we gather so far, will be placed in or already are placed in certain places to make up this grid so the um, prayers can work. I don't know. That's what it sounds like to me. Verse 25 says, The Urim and the Thummim crystals can be materialized by the masters of light to render capabilities for special work. Okay, so these masters of light would be the Ophanim and the angels and these beings that are sent here to help us, those, um, um, those that are coming on the clouds. These stones are to be placed in front of the body so that the spiritual third eye can use the crystals as a point of focus. The key crystal serves as the key focal point for energizing the crystals, which are placed in a pattern of two Morgan Davids. Now, I guess we have to figure out what these Morgan Davids are. Okay, in verse 34, it says... These scriptures form the Morgan David, which codes human consciousness to receive the brotherhoods who form the capstone of living light. Now, notice it says by the masters of light. This is who will have to materialize these crystals. Let's see who they are. So you have ascended masters of light. We don't know if that's necessarily the same. Let's go to the 319, the last uh, chapter in this book. It says, God loves his people, Israel. And because he loves them, he has promised the ascension to them from the world of physical limitations and negation so that they can be like the brothers and masters of light. So I don't know that just getting some crystals is actually going to do anything because it says they can be materialized by these masters of light so if they can be then that mean they cannot be but then notice how it tells you how to use them it says these stones are to be placed in front of the body so that the spiritual third eye can use the crystals as a point of focus but now it's not telling you which direction does it it says the key crystal serves as the key focal point for energizing the crystals which are placed in the patterns of two Morgan Davis. Now, and the two Morgan Davis, we said, are scriptures, right? Let's go back over there. Back in 33, it says the Torah or includes the New Testament scriptures and the Old Testament scriptures, which form the pyramid of light within the star of David. Both are necessary to bring mankind into a direct relationship with the teaching sonship orders of light, which enable us to go into new star creations. So that's what these scriptures are. The, the two scriptures are the Morgan David. So you got your Bible and the Thummim, the Bible and these crystals. And, and it says, um, these scriptures form the Morgan David, which codes human consciousness to receive the brotherhood who form the capstone of living light. Each sonship brotherhood functions as the morning star, opening up a relationship between the sun universe and a new planetary field being made ripe for crossing Alpha and Omega for a new creation. Okay, so I think that just about says it all. We could spend all day on that one, and maybe we should. We should talk, first of all, talking about the Torah, or which is all of the Bible. It ain't just the Torah, but all commands and all scripture you ever read commands, everything. And I'm sure when it's over there talking about placing it between these, you have to actually read it. I don't know if you could just pull out a book. It would be enough, but anyway. Let me go on. It says these are used in the setting of prayer where third eye concentration is necessary upon a given crystal in entering and leaving the states of vocal meditation. Then it goes on to say the mandate for the use of these stones was given in the true priests of Israel who were to elect the name. 
and it gives you the name, give you Exodus chapter 28, 15 through 28. So let's go see what that is. This is talking about the breastplate and all of the crystals in the breastplate. There's your Jasper. There's a footnote beside it. See footnote B. Ha, why are you gonna put that beside the Jasper? Hmm. Well, cause it could have said quartz. The Urim and the Thummim would have been these crystals over here in the breastplate. But there's a lot more to it than that. So let's keep going. Down here in Key 112, 73 says, he tells them that the channel of light that is working through the helmet and the breastplate is continual. This is the focus for language of the Urim and Thummim. All of the energy charges which come in through your heart chakra must be in league with your Keith or fire of faith. Hmm. And this goes along with what he just said about having it in front of you. Um, I guess that's where the heart chakra is. Uh, right in front of your chest. So you're putting these crystals. That's why the breastplate, I guess, was on the breast. Well, so these crystals could be right there in front of them. And being by the heart chakra. But anyway, I'm not sure about the helmet. Uh, let's see what it says about helmet if it ain't too many times. Um, this is down in Key 112. It says he understands his relationship to the ongoing space time that he is part of. Lest he be recycled within the light cone of this order of relativity. He must place his faith on the helmet of hope and salvation. Okay. He must teach the mind force of people to understand how the hierarchy of operates in the larger system of remaking of the planetary creation. So this is what I, if you saw the other video I did on this, this is what I mean. See how all of this is interlaced and interconnected. See, so the helmet is of hope and salvation. So when over here it's saying working through the helmet of hope and salvation and the breastplate, which is the spiritual connection. Now, all of this stuff could be symbolic. But he said these two things together is the focus of the language of the Urim and the Thumb. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Prayer works. So I guess it has to be symbolic somehow. I don't have any Urim and Thumb. He's going to talk about the Benai or here now. Key 11752 says, at this time, the resurrected scrolls are being used with the new scrolls of the Benai or to show how the Urim and Thummim crystals of light can be used to directly call upon the high commands of the angelic forces for deliverance from the earth plane. So now, so it definitely is symbolic because he's talking about the third testament here. Where he says the new scrolls of the Benai Or. And then he's talking about how these are used to communicate. Um, to call upon the high command of the angelic forces for the deliverance from the earth plane. So um, we are able. The third testament does teach us how we can travel through space and time. Not physically. Um, but spiritually and so this is kind of telling us how this works this this book tells us of how a lot of the, all of this stuff works so you have the resurrected scrolls which would be the old testament and the new testament we just learned a few minutes ago those are necessary and he says these are being used with the new scrolls to show how the urim and thummim crystals of light can be used I didn't mean for this to become a vocabulary class, but somebody going to wonder what the Benai Or is. And there it is. You can read it. It's Hebrew for sons of light. Let me just read it. It says the guiding intelligence working with the Elohim and the masters of the 70 brotherhoods, which comprise the great white brotherhood. They have the capacity to externalize and materialize in those dimensions which have been previously seeded and administered by the brotherhoods of light. Now, we did a, a class on this great white brotherhood. At least we, um, maybe not. I think we did. We had to take some stuff down. But 
anyway. The Great White Brotherhood is the 70 orders or brotherhoods as a field of intelligence serving the Father. So these are the myriads of angels that we're expecting to show up in these times. But let's go on. Key 316 verse 29 says, The actual transfiguration works through Urim and Thummim light controls, which are used to build the new network directly between the Brotherhood of Man and the Brotherhood of Light. Let me read 28. It says, Here the higher science is given to the Brotherhood of Man to actually help in the transfiguration of a whole bioengineering process of light. So by the time you get to 316, you, you know some stuff. Verse 40 says, Together the Urim and Thummim operate as sanctified crystals forming a grid for communication which uses sacred vowel patterns to create geometries that merge the different harmonies of color in the various light spectrums with the living divine light. So we learned early that they were sanctified crystals forming a grid on the magnetic field. I think it said... For the communication which uses sacred vowel patterns. Now, these vowel patterns are the Hebrew words, Hebrew letters, Hebrew, Hebrew, to create geometries that merge the different harmonies of color in the various light spectrums. Now, this color is not just with our eyes. You can't necessarily get caught up with what we can actually see. This color may even have, should have um, parentheses around it. These colors in the various light spectrums with the living divine light. 41 says, Moreover, the brotherhood of man, when they are in direct communication with the administrative directors of the Benai Or. So this is talking about the brotherhood of man here. So I guess this would be us. I heard it on brotherhood of man. Eh? I, yeah, they don't tell us what it is. So I guess. But it's all it could be is us. It says, moreover, the brotherhood of man, when they are in direct communication with the administrative directors of the Benai Or, use the Urim and Thummim for the exchange of higher wisdom and the reception of specific thought forms from God. So sounds like we have to have them in our possession and then they get activated. Only when we are in direct communication with the administrative directors, these will be the angels. These will be the Ophanim. These will be the our big brothers. These directors of the Benai Or. Once, once the brotherhood of man gets in communication with them, it says the brotherhood of man use the Urim and Thummim for the exchange of higher wisdom and the reception of specific thought forms of God. So exactly what we always knew they were used for. Now we're just getting some idea of how, when, what, who, and where. All right, let's go on. 56 says the brotherhood of man in this context is able to receive the brotherhood of light that comes in the appearance of an earthling man. Yet, spiritual man as an earthling man is able to recognize the difference. In the same energy field of meeting, both share a higher light environment controlled by Urim and Thummim. Hmm. Comes in an appearance of an earthly man. Yet, spiritual man as an earthling man is able to recognize the difference. Is this talking about the Christ? Is this talking about Messiah? Or he, was, he just thought he was walking around like a human, but I don't, I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section. Let me just read this next verse to show y'all the complexity of this book. It says, when you behold a whole like being, you stand in the presence of the counter mechanistic corpuscles of light as in the appearance of a flash of lightning. And when you exchange the joy of being God's servant with a whole light being, you can actually feel the great rushing of gravitational flux line controls, which are used by the body of the emissary of light to enter and leave this corporal dimension at will. So this is the jerk. He just he just described the Pentecostal jerk where people start holiness. They feel the Holy Ghost and they start shaking. 
He just described the Holy Ghost to you and how, why that happens. But let's go on. We get off track. This book is something else. He 3.17, verse 78 says, Here we see the demonstration of the use of the Urim and Thummim, powers of Regenesis, which control the noise temperature patterns and stimulate the axonal lines, which are the light grids used in direct relationship with the brotherhood reorganizing a particular part of human evolution. So we have the demonstration of the use of the Urim and the Thummim. So it's just... What he just finished talking about over here is the demonstration. Let's just read 77 and maybe that'll give us a clue what he was saying. He said, the brotherhood establishes noise temperature calibrations through crystals of light aligning crystalline environments from regions of pure crystalline transparency to regions of linear crystalline formation. This allows for complex color grids to accompany any set of noise temperature patterns. Pure crystal transparency can work with a multiplicity of new wavelength regions. Yep. Let's go on. Let me say I understand all of this. That's that's why I got that's why we got the book. We were having communication with somebody and they were um questioning our father's decision to come in a book. And how else would you want him to be except in the word of God? Because you can read it over and over until you understand it. Now, what that was that we read was this demonstration of the Urim and the Thummim powers of Regenesis, which control the noise temperature patterns. Um, but then down here in 79, it says, even under the circumstance of the Urim and Thummim creative powers, medical healing and tissue Regenesis are to be understood as a localized event where a person's tissue, organ, limb is healed to the point of normal entropy. Okay, so this is this saying that the Urim and the Thummim doesn't necessarily work for healing? Because, you know, that's what it said over there with them crystals is that they were for healing. But it says, even under the circumstance of the Urim and Thummim creative powers, medical healing and tissue regenesis are to be understood as a localized event. So, again, you guys help me in the comment section. We're going to go on. Looks like we're in a new key here. This will be key 319, where verse 30 says, The jewels of the consciousness regulation are part of the Urim and Thummim jewels of consciousness creation. Each jewel corresponds to a higher Urim and Thummim governed by entities of light who operate directly with thrones of the universal mind in our Father universe. Let's just read 29. It says, And through this new alignment, Metatron showed me how man could create crystalline correspondences between biophysical and geophysical grid structures that could amplify signals of prayer and healing by the faithful. Hmm. Right, we're going to have some more reading to do um, there. But anyway, let's look at verse 31. It says, And Abraham also received these jewels from Melchizedek to build an altar of light vibration to Jehovah who spake to Abraham through the vibrations of light. So this is Shem. Melchizedek is Shem. And so Abraham got these Urim and Thummim from Shem. And so this is how Abraham was able to, to uh, communicate with our father. This is... This is how he was the one guy who we only hear from after Shem. Who did anything, you know, important in the Bible. It's Noah. And then, you know, you hear about Shem only really being Melchizedek. And then, you know, Abraham is next, even though he were many years later. It says, and the Lord said to Abraham, I have set this seal on you to govern all those who belong to the seed of love and light upon the earth so that your seed will gather all true priesthoods into communities of light before the end of time. See, OK, so this what they just said right here is that I'm going to just call them Israel has been the breeding grounds for the Levites. I have to give Father praise and honor for all the understanding. But he's talking to Abraham here, saying that he put the seal on Abraham to govern those who belong to the seed of love and light upon the earth. 
So he's got his, this, this family group is the governor so that your seed will gather all true priesthoods into communities. So the, 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 the family is gathering the priesthoods. Hmm. So what that means is then that all of the Levites that would have been born under any other family group, Japheth, Ham, all would have been gathered under this Abraham through reincarnation. So it's like a breeding ground. So in other words, I could have been Chinese in another lifetime. So that your seed will gather all true priesthoods into communities of light before the end of time. So we hear now. Maybe had to grow through Abraham to be trained up because they are still in other um, races now. They're not all piled up in one race now. They're scattered now. Hmm. I'm going to look in the comment section see if anybody got to say anything about this. It says, and the Urim and the Thummim will be used to re-evolve the grid of the earth according to a new meridian of time on which will be built the light center of my kingdom. Let me read that one again. And the Urim and the Thummim will be used to re-evolve the grids of the earth. Mm, according to the new meridian of time. So this is after the, after the apocalypse, after the earth has been reshaped, after we get a new earth and a new heaven. These Urim and these Thummim are going to be used to set it back up, to, re, to, to um, get the lines right again. Will be used to re-evolve the grids. So the Urim and the Thummim are what set the grids. So they'll be in different places, I guess, reshifted by our father's will in different places so that after it's all over, they, they'll just link up again, I guess. I don't guess nobody got to carry them to the certain places. We won't have any maps, so it won't be up to us. The open them will still be involved, but we'll see. But here's this part. It's new meridian of time on which will be built the light centers of the kingdom. The light centers of my kingdom. So this is going to be the, the places where the smart people hang out. Verse 32 says, I saw how the Urim and Thummim crystals were used to connect the 10 strata beneath a Megiddo, which contained the grid structures composing a timepiece for the Great Pyramid. So it's composing a timepiece for the pyramid. I thought the pyramid, according to this book, was the timepiece. But it says, I saw how the Urim and the Thummim crystals were used to connect the 10 strata beneath Megiddo, which contained the grid constructions composing a timepiece for the So the Urim and Thummim are what's controlling the, the Great Pyramid. It says, I also saw how the Urim and Thummim crystals coordinate other energy structures on the earth with the Great Pyramid, which houses the geophysical timetable and reveals the Ibn Sheftia. The foundation stone to be the unity between the scriptures of Israel and the land of Egypt. Mm, man. So the Urim and the Thummim are the spiritual connection points. They is coming through crystals. Without this, you, you take away the you, you take away the crystals off the planet, and it would be like turning the lights off. Verse 34 says, And the Lord said to Abraham, By the Urim and Thummim, your station of creation was after the manner of the Lord's, according to its times and seasons in the revolutions. That one revolution was a day to the Lord, after his manner of reckoning, it being 1,000 years according to the time appointed to that space-time where you stand. This is the next reckoning of the Lord's time for your physical world, according to the reckoning of the Lord of heavens. See, this is talking about the period we live in, and we're about to make a transition. The six, once we get to the 6,000 years, yeah, it, it's, the time switches. It's like midnight. You start a new day. And these, these Dhammam and these Yom are... Connected. What does it say? And the Lord said to Abraham, By the Urim and Thummim, your station of creation was after the minor of the Lord's according to its times and seasons and revolutions. So the Urim and the Thummim are connecting the six days of creation 
And so the thing about it, they're not mark that not only are they marking that clock that's running on the wall, but they're actually marking all of time. These are piezoelectric crystals. Doesn't tell us the frequency. Well, maybe it does. Let's go on. I seem to remember more information about it in this book. And I believe it's because of the way I did my search. So let me just look for the times when they're not used in the phrase Urum and Thummim. Like, for instance, back up there in key 205, it says the chromo density is controlled by the Merkaba projecting its energy into the meridians of the planet marked by Urum Thummim deposits. So here would be that grid that we were talking about. It's laid out in the deposits where these crystals are. It says these deposits make up the equivalent of 12 pulsating crystals, some of which are of the vibrations of alexandrite, amethyst, sapphire, etc. And the thing about it, we learn in books like Jasher that Aaron's rod was a sapphire rod. That whole rod that he turned into a serpent was made out of sapphire. It says the activation of these crystals by the Merkaba creates a proton spin coupling so that our body becomes sensitized to their light and can be remade into a more perfect form cell by cell. But now that sounds like healing, doesn't it? I mean, if we're being remade cell by cell, that's regeneration. Then down here in key 205, we see something about the soul meditation activated by proper Urum Thummim grid crystals. But I'm not sure what that means. But we get a lot of information over here in key 16. So let's just read through these. Verse 32 says, in order for you to go beyond the increments of the chemical time scale requires the use of Urum circuitry, which overrides the old flow time of the sodium ions and allows for immediate information transfer between the brain codes and the new memory storage. Here the urine circuitry allows for the reception of information at rates faster than analytical comprehension. In fact, when the time frames of memory, past reference, and thought stability are compared with the new incoming information, consciousness time actually speeds up. So we're traveling spiritually with the aid of these crystals is what it's saying here. This Urum circuitry, which are the combination of those seed crystals that we read about over in Deuteronomy. Verse 34 says the Urum are crystals that work within a harmonic grid arrangement through the modulation of those crystals with energy fields of sound and color, spiritual beings can directly send and receive thought forms which can be absorbed consciously or unconsciously. That's the thing about this end times when all of this new information is coming. We look back at how we misunderstood those who knew things like, you know, people who were using crystals as part of their worship. We, we thought there was something wrong with that, but you know, it turns out they may have knew more than we did. But anyway, we find it out now. Verse 35 says, through the Urim, the brotherhood of man is coordinated with the brotherhood of light by means of light crystal frequencies, which activate the channel of love and wisdom. And you know, back, I don't know if we're gonna see Abraham again, but it should be noted that they didn't actually start making the breastplate until Exodus in about chapter 28. But Abraham already had him in his possession. And since he got him from Melchizedek, that means he basically received a handful of crystals. It was only, like I said, in Moses' time that they put him in this very elaborate piece of artwork that we call the breastplate. But before then, I guess Abraham was carrying them around in a bag or something like that. But anyway, verse 36 says the Urim are the lights which connect the process of the man with the different threshold levels of spiritual power. They are energy jewels which connect with the template grid of the eighth chakra so that the flame over the head can be focused into the spiritual pathways being served by the living light. 
man, I, I got a feeling people are going to be shopping for crystals after this video. Verse 37 says, each crystal works at a different vibrational frequency, which coordinates our program with other universal programs within the living light. The Urim are the highest and most perfect form of crystals available for the coordination of human intelligence with the higher evolution. So that's why the particular stones come into play. And for grins and giggles, let's look at some of the other translations because it seems like different translations use different words. Like, for instance, this translation uses ruby, topaz, and emerald, while this translation up here uses sardis, topaz, and carbuncle. And those may be the same thing. A sardis and a ruby are the same stone. I don't know. Now, that was all about the Urim. So the Urim are the crystals. The Urim are the seed stones. The, Ur the Urim is made up of the seed stones that we were just looking at in Exodus. Now look at verse 38, it says, and on the other hand, the thummim are the energy changes around the Urim crystals in which the thought forms coming from God and his hierarchy to his chosen servants stay in perfection while in dimensions of imperfection. So now this is where the haters come in. Those of you who are going to discourage you from even thinking on such things it's because they're not the chosen. And so these crystals aren't working for them. We find out that it's they activated and are used by the brotherhoods. So and 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 they depend on the Torah or as the Morgan David. So there you have people who would read a book like this just trying to gain the powers. So they're running out to grab the crystals, but aren't using the Torah in order to activate the crystals. And then they start hating on those people who are the chosen and you know, try to discourage other people from even looking into this information. But that time that we're living in is coming to an end. So we might as well go on. Verse 39 says, I also saw how the thought forms of God's messengers would be negated by the energies of imperfection on the physical plane, were it not for the perfect resonance of the thummim light protecting the auto resonant properties of the Urim and their thought forms that are exchanged through spiritual reciprocity. So, and you know, that's the other reason why they would try to discourage is because what we understand here is that long as they can keep this thumb dim or keep it, keep its light hidden, then, you know, imperfection can prevail. And you know what they say, Chaos means cash flow. So let's look at verse 40. It says, together, the Urim and Thummim operate as sanctified crystals forming the grid. And we read this earlier about the crystals being sanctified using the sacred vow patterns. So let's look that up. Over here in Key 202 is talking about the sacred letters. Um, verse 25 is talking about the Yad He Wad He, which would be the Tetragrammaton. And then over here in 31 is talking about the Aleph and the Tav, which we all recognize those as being very powerful letters. But we see a connection with these vowel here. It says the Hebrew divine letters Aleph and Tav and the vowel Siegel are coordinated by the divine breath so as to establish intervals between divine light termination periods. So I'm not sure if that's what we're talking about here. This seems like the vowel sound that they put to to make you be able to pronounce the Aleph and the Tav. They have to add vowels in there. But here we see it again down here in verse 40. It says, in the chain formation sequence of light unto the life and life unto light it is also the vibratory grid which is the control mechanism for the stop expression in the hebrew letters aleph and tav and the vowel sigil sigil represents the divine breath being used into the micro molecular substratum of the primary amino acids 
So we got some more study to understand these this vowel sound here. All praises to our father. But if I'm understanding this correctly, it is this seagull, this vowel sound that allows us to pronounce the words correctly. Like for instance, the yad hey wad hey. We know those are the tetragrammaton, but how exactly are they pronounced? It reminds me of that old song, apples and bananas, you know, apples and bananas, apples and bananas. Well, when I did a study not too long ago, it was like many of the words that were similar to the tetragrammaton used the U sound, making the word Yahuwahu. But Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section. This may not even be what it's talking about at all. So let's go on to verse 42. In 207, it says, Human sublanguages are created by grouping visual fields of basic vowels and consonants. Man does not understand that during these early stages of evolution, his vowel patterns are drawn from a trapped consciousness environment controlled by the wave radiations of his biomagnetic and gravitational planetary environment, which is, you know, all about the change here. So, you know, this is about to become important as we go through these changes uh, to our biomagnetic and gravitational planetary environment. So this would be related to the new language here. Um, I don't know. Verse... 14 out of 214 says the image is sustained by a fan of colors generally operating between the 9 and 12 colors which maximize ratios of color vowels and consonants transposing instruction into a plate text or teaching in the appropriate language within the language of light so anybody who's interested in all of this is going to have to learn the sacred vowels in order to sanctify the crystals. But what we understand from this class is that these crystals are sanctified through the vows. So is is this something like praying in Hebrew or something like that? Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me read verse 41 again. It says, Moreover, the brotherhood of man, when they are in direct communication with the administrative directors of the Benai Or, use the Thummim and the Yom for the exchange of higher wisdom and reception of specific thought forms. So, definitely got some work putting all of this together. The next time we see Yom without the phrase Yom and Thummim is down here in 319. Verse 33 says, I saw how the vibrations of the Urim crystals were used to activate the grids so that the formation of three-dimensional negativity were shifted and the treasures of the masters were brought out of the earth in the name of Michael, Abraham, Jacob, and Enoch. So he, this is the last chapter in the book where he's seeing all of these things, futuristic things. So what he's seeing is the brotherhood of man using these crystals in order to shift negativity. And then it says, and the treasures of the masters were brought out of the earth in the name of Michael, Abraham, Jacob, and Enoch. So this is actually could be talking about the Ark of the Covenant, which is buried in a rock. I think it was Jeremiah that buried it in a rock and hid it from us. So the Urim crystals along with the Thummim will be used to bring that treasure back out. Or maybe it's talking about the instruments to make the daily sacrifice. Those, those are also hidden. Oh, and, and there's a lot of scriptural text that's hidden too. So, I don't know. There's a lot of treasures that's hid from us right now. I think we know how to find them. And then, so that's going to be it. That brings us back to where we started from, which is talking about the seed crystals. And over in Exodus chapter 28 and verse 17, we saw the ones in the first row. 18 shows us the ones in the second row. And they have a little bit different names. I see turquoise versus emerald. And then I see a diamond in there. And then down here, I see lopus and luzulu instead of emerald. And these may be related. I'm not sure. Um... I think we're going to have to check the Hebrew in order to get an understanding of what they was really talking about, which stones they're really talking about. Because like you see here in the third row, you see uh, Jathens, but then up here you see a Lagur. 
And then down here you see a zircon. So which one is it? Ligurus, Opal, Jacinth, or Zikron? That was in the third row. And then we see in the fourth row, it says Beryl, Onyx, and Jasper. And they seem to be pretty clear. Well, no, down here in the Darby, we see a chrysolite instead of a beryl. And that was one of the hardest gems to find when I was perusing over on eBay was a chrysolite. But maybe a chrysolite is a beryl. Anyway, so there's a lot to go into this. A lot to come out of it, too. But my most trusted source for information like this is the Septuagint. So let's read them off there. It says they are the Sardis, Topaz, Emerald in the first row, Carbuncle, Sapphire, and Jasper in the second row, Ligor, Agate, and Amethyst in the third row, Chrysolite, Beryl, and Onyx in the fourth row. And notice there's not a diamond in here. However, we see in the other English translations, um, diamond is used a lot. Um, we do see uh, emerald there and even a moonstone up there in some of the translations. So I believe we could be sure it wasn't a diamond. It may be what prevents you from actually making it when you try to price these stones and realize that, you know, you about to spend a whole lot of money on a diamond. But anyway, may not be necessary. So so what it boils down to is that the Urim is made up of the seed stones or the crystals. And the Thummim is the energy that these crystals uh, generate. But what's really interesting is that there are two books. Uh, one called the Book of Remembrance. And the other one called the Seal Portion in which the authors claims to have used the Thummim and the Urim in order to write the book. The, both of these books were written in latter days. I think the one called the Book of Remembrance was written in the 2000s or something like that. And the seal portion may be a little bit older. But both books claims that the author used the Thummim and the Urim in order to get the information. So apparently people have actually not only tried this, but it's actually worked and they were able to write books based on the information that they received from these touchstones. So I don't know. I guess it's one way to find out. And if you choose to do so, please let me know in the comment section how it turns out. And in the meantime, go ahead and hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can get this new information as it comes out in the form of video. Pray for me and shalom.